I'm Rob and today we're at the Queen's Head in Burley. The Queen's Head was originally a 17th century blacksmith's forge, um, much built onto to be the pub it is today, uh, but it was also the haunt of Peter Warne, the local uh, ne'er-do-well smuggler and outlaw, and it's said that his horse is buried under the pub. And it's also said that uh, you can hear the whinnying of a horse at night sometimes. It's really surprising with the New Forest ponies in the, in the village. But anyway, we start our walk by walking down through the village. You'll notice a witch theme in the village. That's because in the 1950s there was a, a lady that lived in the village called Sybil Leek. And she was a white witch and she did healing and other such things. But her uh, most memorable thing is that she used to walk around with a jackdaw on her shoulder. Anyway, that's the, the witchcraft connection here. She um, emigrated to the USA at the end of the day. And you notice a dragon in the window as well. And that's because the Bistern dragon was said to live around the village. And he would fly into Bistern every morning and terrorise the residents to uh, feed him milk. She's probably preferable to children. Anyway, we carry on into the village centre. And this is the War Memorial for the First and Second World War. And we carry on through the village. An old landy in there. Another witchcraft shop. And a lovely little cottage that is uh, currently for sale. There's a little mall of shops, mainly ice cream shops and touristy shops. Well, the name Burley comes from the Saxon Burr, which is a fortified place or palace, and Lee, which is a clearing or open meadow. So Burley, the fortified place in the open meadow. The Burley lifestyle on the corner, we turn left off of the main road along this gravel road. We continue up the gravel track past all these lovely houses and keep on until we reach a tarmac road. Well, that's got to be the best idea ever what to do with an old stump. So we exit Garden Road, turning left, we're going to pick up a path to our right. Right opposite the garage, nice well-worn path. And you just carry on forwards. You seem to be heading out to the road again, but we're going to turn right. Down this road towards the Moorhill House Hotel. A lovely day for walking, it's about 23 degrees. There's a moderate breeze, keep you cool. And of course we've got the lovely shady trees and woodland of the New Forest. And at the sign for Goat's Pen Cottage, we go off to the left on this track and we emerge more onto the open forest. And it's the end of August and all the lovely purple heathers that the forest is famous for are coming out. So we're now on top of Shappen Hill and then we'll be dropping down to Slap and Slap Bottom. So over on the right is one of 23 
Bronze Age burial sites. And we came down the hill and then we head round to the right. And we carry on to the right on the path through the woodland. And after crossing the dried up stream, we're heading to the gravel car park you can see through the bushes. And we head out of the car park along this gravel track, which leads us down onto the old railway track. Now this railway track was called Castleman's Corkscrew, more about that later, but this is the, the kind of northern limit of it that's cyclable, it's, it's all cycle track. Um, then there's a gap until you get to Ringwood and then there's uh, more cycle track when you get to Ringwood, which you can see on my Ringwood walk strangely enough. So the railway from London to Waterloo had pushed its way down to Southampton by 1840 and they wanted to move the line along to Dorchester. So with a lot of backing from a chap called Castleman, who was a, a Wimborne solicitor, they decided to uh, build this line, which was called Castleman's Corkscrew, because it followed a tortuous route. The passenger trade carried on fairly well until 1888. Uh, then what happened was uh, they built a new railway line to take in Pokesdown, Christchurch, Bournemouth. Bournemouth had hitherto been a, a quiet fishing village, but during the boom in Victorian times for sea bathing and holidays, Bournemouth had become massive and needed its own station. So the passenger service on this line just fell by the wayside. The line carried on though until 1964, carrying goods and forestry products and so on and so on. And during the Second World War, it was a very, very busy line for the, uh, the construction of the airfields in the forest, particularly Holmesley. Let's continue down this lovely gravel cycle stroke pathway that the railway now is. There's little bits of railway history left in the undergrowth if you look hard enough. Famous New Forest Ponies. They'll probably be in Burley itself later on when there's lots of visitors. Hence lots of food which you shouldn't feed them but people do. So of course in the forest there are ponies all over because they're a commoner's rights. That means people who live on the forest have the right to graze their animals anywhere in the forest. Most people give the horses a wide berth. <laughs> there's old gate posts for level crossing. of Greenberry Bridge. It's so, that Holmesley Passage level crossing. I think this might have been a, a level crossing keeper's cottage at one time but completely rebuilt into this very very nice house. There's still some original line there just before and just after it uh, crosses the road. Anyway we're taking the road across Holmesley Bog. As I say, we're going to walk across Holmesley Bog, and that's one of the reasons that the, uh, the railway's route is so tortuous. Uh, not only was it to get to the different destinations, but they also didn't like the railway cutting through woodland because sparks from the uh, firebox might catch fire in the woodland. So if there was a bog, they would divert out the railway through it. And uh, as I say, this is Holmesley Bog.
at the junction with the main road into Brockenhurst. We're going to turn left, walk on this gravel path by the side of the road back into the village. I think somebody needs a bit of practice. The golf course, this is Burley Golf Club, is way over the back of those trees there. Someone was uh, massively off target. And there's the aforementioned golf course. And lots of ladies out playing golf. And lots of opportunity to stay off the road. There's plenty of grass forest land that you can walk on by the side of the road. Don't be tempted to walk on it. Sometimes people come a little bit too fast. And there's the clubhouse over there. And there's the quick cricket wicket, all marked off. Morning! And there we are, back down the hill to the pub. So that was a lovely walk, around about five miles long, a bit of railway, a bit of open forest, a bit of lovely village. Um, if you like the walk, please like and subscribe. Now we can't go in the pub here, but I've spoken to the landlady and we haven't had corporate permission from Green King, so we won't be going in today. Um, so we're going to get that the sandwich out But anyway, it's the pub there if you want to come in after the walk. If not, we're going to a tea room now. So we've decided to eat in the old farmhouse tea rooms where we can eat outside and some lovely food at a very reasonable price. So we're at the old farmhouse. Thank you. 